Howdy folks, West Kentucky Outdoors here today. I'm doing a little bit of fishing at the creek and there's some big chubs down there. I know for a fact there's some catfish. I'm fishing with two hooks. One of them has a worm on it. The other one doesn't have anything on it right now. So I'm fishing with worms for catfish in a creek. And there's some giant chubs in here that make me wonder whether they're chubs or not. And there's a tree that I had to jump over just a second ago. So if you were on my Instagram, you could have seen that. Is that a trout? I know it's totally possible. There's not very many of them here, but there's definitely probably some. And I've never seen them. Or is that a catfish, maybe? Trout, catfish, chub, don't know. But I'm going to try to find a spot to put this without spooking all the fish off. Because there's a bunch down there. So you might not be able to see me. I might have to edit all that out. Uh, to the point where you can't see me but my rig here and I've got this all tangled up now because I had to jump over a log. Logs suck. And that is the truth especially whenever you're trying to fish in a creek. Okay here's my here's my rig. Two hooks. One's got a worm on it. I'm just gonna come over here Every footstep is giving me. Okay, I'm scaring all the fish off. Okay, y'all ought to be able to see it then. Good. Okay, I'm gonna try to find a spot You ought to be swimming towards my worm, not away from it, you dummy. I'm standing right next to you. Oh, that was a fish right there. Do I still have one? Shoot, I missed a fish. I had one. I missed him. Ooh, almost had him. Okay. I'm losing bait. I only had one worm on anyway, so you know I've only lost two this whole entire place, so I've got some. Ah, oh, geez, I just hooked myself. I've got some right here in my poopy. Worms. Nice fresh. Worms. Don't know if y'all can see that, but they're there. Nice blood worm right here. These things work. I know they work, because that's what I was using. He got all them bites on just now. Oh. oh, I meant to hook it on the bottom hook. I didn't. Oh, that's gonna take off a little bit, but not a lot. There's a nice one right there. Oh, 
got one. Oh, I missed him. He stole my bait. Again. This is what you gotta deal with. Down here. Whenever you're fishing for the smallest fish ever. In the middle of a creek. So we're gonna, this is a nice sized worm here. So we're gonna split him up. Half and half, half and bottom. Half on top. Biggest half goes on the bottom. Because that's where most big fish are. And it should be easier to throw stuff. So. Okay, there's a bunch of little fish down there. Whenever I say they're big fish, I don't mean that they're like two pounders. They're not. They're not even the size. Of, they're not even half a pound. So you're probably like, man, that's a tiny little fish, but they're big for what they are. And I'm not lying whenever I say that. And we got crappie fish this almost, just like you'd be using a crappie pole. You just stick it out there. Do I got one? Add one. I'm getting torn up down there. Fight it. Come on. I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for the big guy. Oh, I got one. Oh, I have one. Oh, had another. Okay, we're gonna give them time to get back in that area because I scared them off a little bit. So while we're giving them time to do that, I'm going to stand these up, rehook this worm. That one should be a little bit better. Oh yeah, should bend the bottom one up too. So, we ought to be able to pull one up on this one. Because I had weed guard I have weed guards on these for bass fishing. But because bass hit hard usually. So they can press down weed guards, but a little fish like this can't press down weed guards. I got one. Oh, never mind. He's off. These things are super hard to catch. Ooh, got one. Ooh, I almost had one. Ooh, I think I still got one. No, I don't. Mm. These fish are extremely hard. Setting the hook good enough. I'm pulling back. That's it. All I'm doing is pulling it back. That tight set the hook. Oh, got one. Yes. I got me a fish. Finally. This is my third fish of the year, y'all. Now I got him snagged in a tree right now.
Okay. Oh shoot, almost dropped him right then. Mm. Well, I did drop him right then. Let's see if I can lift this sucker. That's a little creek chub right there. Perfect bait for crappie, bass, small catfish, or regular size catfish if used properly. Catfish won't necessarily bite these. I'd catch maybe large um, bullheads, small flatheads on this. And they're perfect bait. And there's a cup right there, and I'm probably not going to keep them, but it's totally possible, so I'm going to go grab that cup real quick. Okay, buddy. And also, a good way to make a live well while you're in a creek is dig down in the sand and just put them in the water that comes up out of that. It's like a spring live well. So let me crawl over and get this. Oh shoot, he just jumped out. He's a mad fish. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, I don't want you in there. You're gonna get lost. I want you right there. I'll dig you a nice hole. And there you go. I'm supposed to be back by like 6, and it's 5.39 right now. I've got a little bit longer. And if I can get up there, I'll try to. We're still after these little guys right here. If I catch one a little bit too small, it's fine. I'll use him for bait for catfish. Got one. Snagged him. Okay, y'all. This right here. Fourth fish, fish, fourth fish of the year. Another creek chub, slightly larger, and I actually foul hooked him a little bit. My first actual foul hooked fish. And sadly, where I hooked him at was right there in the stomach, which could lead to him dying, but I doubt it. Because these things, 
are beasts whenever it comes to surviving things. I'll tell you that for sure. Mm -hmm. They absolutely beasts at surviving. So, still got a little bit worm left. Yeah, unsnag this first. Still got a little bit left, and we know since he's probably gonna, since he's got a chance of dying, I don't want to just make him suffer. We're probably gonna use him to cut bait. And really rip bait because I just bring my knife with me. Because I don't want people taking a kid, bringing a knife somewhere the wrong way. Slightly off the ground this time, so Okay, fellas. Okay, folks. So, just lost the last bit of my worm. So, I'm going to be going upstream. Might use some cut bait. So, I'm going to... Jeez, I've already used 17 of these dang minutes up. So, yeah, I'm going to be heading back down there. See if I can't find a catfish or a trout or a bluegill or something and I'm going to use that cut bait there and I'm going to see if I can't get me a new pet or catfish bait so see y'all next time I'm going to be in the same video so I'm not going to do my intro but um, I came out here this is day two at the creek and the same creek I was in you can see all the water here this is my creek chub spot it's got some monsters in it you can't see them right now because the water's so muddy but, oh my gosh, oh shoot, I'm filming in vertical, but I'm out here trying to catch some nice-sized mudcats and bluegills and trout, and there's very few trout in here. I've only seen one bluegill in here, I've only seen a couple catfish. And I come up here, and there's a tire, there's a rusty tire that sits, that's, uh, sorry, that sits right there, right by those two rocks. And I'd never really pulled it completely up out of the water. But I was out here fishing with my fly lure. I don't have a fly rod just... Well, I don't have a fly rod with me. I do have one. I do own... Well, I don't own one. But I have a fly rod. And I've never fished with it. I've practiced with it once. And I got it all tangled up. So, I mean, that's a hard fix. But I was putting on fly lure. I came out here, spooked all the fish off that rusty tire that was down there. I lifted it up, a bunch of big fish swam out of it, and I noticed that there was like a divot, like a little bowl shape in it. And I was like, yeah, there's probably some fish that swim up in that. So I lifted it up, and again, like I said, I was out here fishing mainly for catfish. And I'll show y'all later, but um, that fishing trip I did yesterday where I caught the two fish, one of the biggest fish got away, but the little one I kept and I put them in a fish tank and I put a filter on so it'd stay cold in there and it'd have oxygen flowing through it. And that fish jumped out and he's dead now, sadly, but you can probably hear that. I mean, maybe not, it's all the way down there. 
But I lifted it up and I found the two two of the least the least seen fish that I've ever seen. Most of the fish down here, the only fish I've really ever seen are creek chubs. So I don't know if y'all can see that. You can see this right here. That is one of the fish that I tried to come here for. This is a mud cat. I don't want to pick him up, he might spin me. But this right here, I'm in some of my videos you might hear me call these bluegill but their technical species is green sunfish which is amazing that I found these two fish because these are two of the fish I was going here for and I found them both just by lifting up a tire that's been here for probably years and that's amazing there's a bunch of fish going here now the big creek chubs came out of that tire I thought I had one of those but no I caught a catfish which is literally a bluegill and a trout are the least seen things I've only seen one bluegill and I've seen one thing that might be a trout because this does connect to Clark's River and they used to stock trout down there so it wouldn't be a surprise if some got up in this cool spot here but this these are exactly what I was looking for I don't know if you can see them in the water you can see them jumping right there that is the bluegill this right here is the catfish they're going home into my bait tank. It's not going to be completely full of bait until I clean out my other one and get them in here. I wasn't thinking that I was going to get a, fi a pet fish today. That green sunfish, um, I might take him fishing with me in the lake just in case I want to go flathead fishing. But these are some of the m most amazing things. I've never got to lay my hands on either of these fish in this creek. And I've only caught a few mud cats in my whole entire life, and those mostly from last year. But yeah, I did bring a cup, so we're, he's right here. We're going to wash him out. We're going to wash this cup out, because it's got Kool-Aid in it. And so I'm going to wash it out here in the creek. I'm not going to dump it back in the creek. I'm going to dump it up somewhere up there so I don't pollute the water, because this is a rusty tire here, and it could kill this tire will not go back in the water because rust can kill fish if it chips off and breaks and the fish swallow it so yeah I'll um gotta put the camera down now but I will clean this out dump it somewhere up there and I'll get these fish out of the tire and get them to their new home so just your last look at these fish for right now until I get them in the tank Okay, y'all, so um, I got home from the creek maybe an hour ago. I don't know exactly. I'm not good with time stuff. It's about 7.55, and I got home at about 7.45, so it's been about an hour. So, yeah, I said whenever I got back, I'd show y'all my tank. It's the same day that I found those fish in the tire. And I did a little bit of woodwork trying to get stuff some sticks to fit in there I just put some gravel fresh gravel gravel in the bottom and I put a little hideout spot for the catfish in there so yeah as you can see my hair is a little bit wet let me get down here I got this right next to my fishing pole so yeah I don't see the bluegill anywhere as of right now but there's the catfish hopefully y'all can see him Look, he's right there I say you can, that's a little mud cat, and it's actually on his tail. It looks like it's forked. He does not have a forked tail. That's from fighting other catfish, and this water's so muddy right now. Oh, is he there? Okay. The other fish. Maybe you can see him a little bit. Here, let me move that out of the way. Can you see him? Just swim away now. No, I don't see. Him. Oh, I see him now. He's. Mm -hmm. You see him moving right there? He's just barely moving. He's right there. That little green sunfish. They're not sure what I'm gonna do with him yet. Yeah, you can see him on this camera. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with him yet. He's probably going to stay in here. As you can see, it looks just like a bluegill. And it also looks just 
its mouth, you can't see that right now because it's not eating, but if you saw one in the wild and you caught one, it would eat just like a bass. You can catch these on, min these are pretty much tiny crappie or miniature bass. Uh, well, he's right there, he's looking at the camera, hi buddy. He just swam inside that little cash express cup, not sponsored. <laughs> I don't see him now, but there's the catfish right there. He's actually not completely a baby catfish. I know he looks tiny, and if y'all are really outdoors people and don't really, and you think it, that this thing is a flathead catfish, and you're like, you can't keep that, it's too small, it's illegal. That is a lie, this is a mud cat. Or also known as a yellow bullhead or a brown bullhead. I don't extremely know, but I do know that I can keep him. So, yeah. Okay, I just saw that little blue girl. But yeah, here's my tank right here. That one fish I caught yesterday died. He jumped out. Creek chubs, you can't expect to keep them. Even for a day, they jump out of the tank and they die. They got bad habits about that. But yeah, that's my tank right up. Here's the filter. Yeah. But yeah, that filter right there keeps this moving just like it would in a creek. As you can see, just like it would on a creek. That's the top. It goes this way. Whenever you get lower down here, it goes this way. So it's sort of like a convection current almost. That catfish is just staying there. He's weird, I guess. Then again, they just got moved in here. You know, they're a little bit stunned right now. So, they're not going to do a lot. Hey, there's the bluegill. The green sunfish just sitting there. Maybe you can see him. right there but yeah that's it for this episode of West Kentucky Outdoors I'll see you hopefully tomorrow because I think I might go fishing tomorrow since I did a lot of stuff today so I might go fishing tomorrow if I do that will be on my other camera that needs to be charged right now but luckily I can stay up a lot longer because I don't have to do anything tomorrow early tomorrow so I can literally just stay up as long as I want and so I can keep both my computer and my PlayStation running so I can charge that camera because it's dying it's actually like really almost dead the little it's a, a little camcorder the wing open the screen on it is a little bit wonked out for some reason I don't know why so every time you walk with it on your back it opens and closes and it turns on and off but yeah that's it for this episode I'll give you one last look at the tank from above that's it for this episode of West Kentucky Outdoors I'll see you next time